sunlight on the Arctic Circle where the sun never goes down. The sun just goes around in a circle. And that was really magical for me. I really love yeah. that. Yeah. All right. We have two Johns in this class, Ms. Helen. We have John 12 and John 11. And John 11 just said, okay, teacher, because John 11 will read a sample tonight of his work. Um, our, our final homework assignment was things in 10 steps, how to make things in 10 steps. And John did uh, spaghetti, how to make spaghetti bolognese, the meat sauce. And it was really good. John, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you, teacher. Yeah, nice work on your final homework on spaghetti bolognese. I didn't know you were such a good cook. Uh, yeah, and yeah. I, I uh, follow the steps of my, uh, of my cooking for boys book because yeah. I read it one time already and I can also imagine how it is. Yeah. All right. And then John 12 from Dong Nai. Hey, John, sorry in the, uh, debate class you joined late and I'm sorry I didn't call on you, but yeah. I'm sorry, John, but your teacher in the breakout room said you did a great job, right? So I was happy yeah. to hear. She said you were a team leader for all the young students. So that's really wonderful, John. Thank you so much. We have a new student, Kitty. Is it Kitty? Um, Kitty, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Kitty, I like your um, earphones and your microphone piece. It looks like, are you a game playing person? No, I just uh, buy it for my learning. Oh, okay. Because um, I think John 11 has the headphones and microphone for playing games. Let me check with him. Hey, John, are you still there? John 11, the spaghetti bolognese guy. <laughs> hey, John. Yeah? Are your headphones, are those to play computer games? No. No, okay. Kitty said it don't have a microphone. Uh, okay, yeah, so your microphone is important. Hey, John, did you get braces recently? Uh, yeah. Yeah, did you have those all the time, or are they new? Mm, I just had the upper one yeah. uh, yesterday, and that yeah. one is like um, six months ago. Okay, don't worry about it. You look cool. I think they look good, John, and you'll have great teeth. My teeth are all messed up. I have to go to the dentist. We have a new student, <laughs> Havy or Havy? How do you say your name? Havy? Is it Havy? My name is Havy. Havy. Yes. Uh, it's just spelled like the uh, happy. Oh, like happy. So can I say happy or Havy? Havy? Can I say Havy? Havy, it's okay. a nice name. Havy, it's really cool. All right, thanks, Havy. Nice to meet you. My name is Brendan. And uh, let's see, we have Daisy. Hello, Daisy. How are you? Hello, I'm great. Daisy, that's a nice name. It's a, it's a happy name. All right. Next, we have Mr. Ne Nakin. Nakin, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. How about you? Pretty good. Pretty thanks for your writing. It was excellent, Nakin. I shared it with my friend, and we both agreed you have advanced writing skills that were very nice to see, Nakin. You express thoughts really nicely. Great to see you again. LS12, always a pleasure. How are you, LS12? I'm great. Great. Thank you for your fine writing, Ellis. Very serious young writer and good to see. How about Ariel? How are you, Ariel? <laughs> Ariel, how are you? Good. Ariel, I met you before in the writing class or uh, number one, was it? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, good to see you again. And then we have Liam Vung Tao. Hey, Liam, that's a great name, you know. That means William in Irish, Liam. Thank Liam, you. are you there? Yeah, how did you get the name Liam? Did your foreign teacher give you that name? Um, my mom, my mom put the, uh, and my mom, my mom yeah. made that name for me. That's really good. I have a friend from uh, Ireland named Liam. It's a really cool name, you know. Hey, Liam, you have the game player's headphones and mouthpiece, don't you? Mm, yeah. Yeah, so what game do you love to play? Uh, I didn't, I usually play games, but now I, I don't play anymore. Are you too busy with school? Yeah. 
Yeah, some mothers and fathers say, stop playing games. You have to focus on your schoolwork. Liam, what subject do you like best? Math or science, or English? Uh, I like English best. English, yeah. Very good. Thanks, Liam, for joining our course. And how about Mai Din? I like that name, Mai. Mai, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Hello. How are you today? Um, and I'm good. And also, can you call me Zoom? That's my is my surname. Okay. Can you type it in? Can you type? Is it Zoom? Yeah. Okay. Can you? Do you know how to change the typing? Zoom. You could just write it if you want in English letters on your um, Zoom thing. Yeah, I'll change it later. Oh, okay. So I'll call you Zoom. Say it one more time. How do you say it? Uh, you can either call it Zoom or Zoom. Yeah. Like Vietnamese people call it Zoom, but it could be hard to pronounce for foreigners. How do you say Zoom? Mm, yeah. All right. Zoom. That's a cool name. I'm going to put it. Be, Mr. Yeah. Brendan. Yes, Mr. I John. That, that it, the sound of it is so familiar to Zoom that you just call him Zoom. We have Zoom, but he's Zoom like that. He wants me to get the Vietnamese pronunciation right. You see, John. All right. How about Tram An? Shall I just call you An? An, are you there? Yes, I'm here. How, how are you, An? I'm fine, thanks. Yeah. On what city do you live in? I live in Ho Chi Minh City. Oh, okay. Is the weather still hot in Ho Chi Minh City? No. Okay. Last week, the students said it was really hot in Ho Chi Minh City, that it was 36 degrees already. Hello, teacher. Oh, it's Mr. Tim. Tim, I was just about to say, what, where is Tim? Tim, I'm talking to some new students. We have Daisy is with us and Zoom is with us. And uh, everybody, this is Tim. His hobby on weekends is he races laser cars all over Hanoi. And sometimes he takes the laser cars down to Ho Chi Minh City. But the police always catch him and they send him back to Hanoi. <laughs> Great to see you, Tim. Did you have a nice break? What did you do for your break? Uh, I don't know. You you did what? You uh, don't. I, ah, I, I visit my uh grand uh grandparents. Grandparents are they? How old are they? Uh, about uh uh, uh sixty years years old. Wow. Okay, Tim. Hey, Tim. I'll be fifty eight years old at the end of April. <gasps> I'm an old man, Tim. All right, let's check with this person. It says FSC, who is FSC? Is that a football club? FSC, who is that? FSC, mystery person. FSC, how are you? FSC, yeah, who is that FSC? Tina, I like that with the purple thing. How are you, Tina? Um, good, thanks. Good, nice to see you. I like your cartoon animations, they look uh, sweet. Let's see, is there a Gia, Nguyen Gia Khan? Are you there? Yes. Yeah, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Good, thank you for joining our course. And we'll begin in just a moment. I'm looking for a student. Hey, there's Red Army. How are you, Red Army? Yes, I'm right there. Are you doing okay? Yeah. Yeah, did you have a good break? Break? I'm yeah. just a normal break, like another break. Yeah, just a normal break. Okay. Hey, you guys, I'm looking for the student Lewis because he wrote some homework, but I don't know if he's here. So I will go to John 11. Let me explain this homework to you. Um, we finished our writing number one two weeks ago, and I asked the students to do 10 steps, long steps, on how to do something. And our student, John, um, made a 10-point um, list and a presentation on how to make spaghetti. Let me put up the spaghetti. It's like a recipe and how to make. And John can read this for you. If you see red, 
Yeah, so if you see red R, um, if you see red writing, that's my writing. This is how I help you when you have homework. Um, I put up red writing to help you here. But John usually makes no mistakes. This is like perfect writing, John. So John, go ahead and read this for our new students and everybody else. Okay, teacher. Hmm. How to make spaghetti bolognese? Hmm. Ingredients. Bolognese sauce. One onion. One tablespoon of olive oil. A club of garlic. One tear of chopped tomatoes. 400 grams or 10 R. Mm -hmm. Two mm -hmm. of tomato puree, mm -hmm. 225 grams, eight of of green mint leaf, meat, mm -hmm. one beef soft cube, mm -hmm. spaghetti, 150 grams of dry spaghetti, half a teaspoon of olive oil. And mm -hmm. also I want to uh, add here is it is for one person. Mm -hmm. How to make one. Chop the onion finely. Heat the oil over medium heat for a minute, then add the onion and cook for five minutes. Two, press the garlic into the pan. Cook for one to two more minutes, stirring all the time until the onion is soft. Next, add the meat into the pan and cook it for about 10 more minutes until it's browned all over. Break any lumps with a spoon. Put the stock cube into a jar. Pour 300 milliliters, one cup of pink boiling water, and stir it until it dissolves. Then add it to the pan. Add the chopped tomato, tomato puree, herbs, and a little pepper. Six. When the sauce boils, turn down the heat so it's just bubble. Put on the lid. Leave a small gap and cook for three minutes. Then take off the lid and cook for more for ten more minutes. Mm. Stir occasionally. Seven. While the sauce is cooking, we can make the spaghetti. Mm -hmm. Eight. Put the spaghetti on a dish and pour the bolognese sauce on top. You could try many toppings. I prefer past living cheese. Bring it to a nice place and quite spacey. Ten, enjoy it. Nice work, John. That's why I said perfect. Congratulations. No mistakes. There was just one. Oh, boils. I found this mistake just now, but no problem, John. Really good. Um, John, I want to show the students when you said use the minced beef. I found this picture, and so the question I have about this minced beef is: um, some people make the minced beef with spices in the meat. So do you see all these minced beef? This is the raw style. And then this is the cook style. John, do you put spices into your minced beef? I would say I'll, pre I'll prepare yeah. in the minced beef because we yeah. have to put the ingredients in the uh. meat and then leave it in the refrigerator for uh, about one to two hours for oh. it to for the flavor to get yeah. into the meat and yeah. then it will be ready to make. Hey John, where did you learn to make these? From your mother, your grandmother, from a cookbook, from YouTube? From a cookbook. Okay. Hey, John, do you see these kind here? Some people make the meatballs flat so you make sure they get cooked really well. Yeah. And so one more thing I want to say is, where yeah. is Mr. Jaikin? I want Mr. to see. Who is it? Jaikin. I want to see Jaikin from last time. I know. I don't know if he's here or not. <laughs> he's a he's the world's greatest cook. Hey, John, do you use this expensive Parmesan cheese like this? I only prefer that um, it's quite. Because this is the expensive stuff, John, but you can also get uh, shaker, it's called shaker can Parmesan. So shaker can looks like this by Kraft, the famous company. And this is much cheaper. Yeah, so this you can put in the refrigerator. The other one's kind of expensive and you have to be careful with it. But John, thank you so much. We did extra time because I can't find Lewis. And I can't find the world's great chef. 
uh, the other guy. I forgot his name. You know who I mean. Oh, he knows, yeah, he knows so much about cooking. And then there's another guy who is a really nice guy, too. I hope he joins our class. You had really great students last time. Okay, are you guys ready? I need somebody to help me read a little bit. And so I want to choose a new student so we can really welcome our new students so they feel comfortable joining us, right? And so today's lesson we're going to start is called Fact and Opinion. Javi, do you like to read English? Do you have a good reading voice? Tim is smiling. <laughs> So, Havy or Javi, are you there? How about Liam? Liam, would you like to read? Yes. Okay, Liam, I'll put the blue here. Can you, this is kind of long, but can you read from here to here, the blue part? Yes, I can. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Good to see you return. Tonight, for our first lesson, we will work on facts or opinion. People like to share the facts they know whenever they get the chance. Others like to share their opinions. Let's quickly re review what a fact is. A fact is a noun, of course, and it is something known to be true or real. It is something real or something that can be proven true using low logic or science experiment mm. an opinion also a noun is a belief uh, or a personal judgment mm. generally your teacher asks question in class because they are looking for answers that are facts for example what is the main ingredients of paper the answer is wood from tree this is fact nice liam you're a good reader so let me ask you guys, do you learn this in school? Naken, did you learn fact and opinion in your primary school with your teacher? Uh, yes. Yeah. Actually, do they do it in English or in Vietnamese? In English. Mostly. Yeah, because it's also a basic skill I think they would teach in Vietnamese school. Let me ask Miss Helen, because you also worked with primary school students. Do you teach um, opinion and fact from an early age, from seven or eight years old? Mm. Yes, I think so. Uh, mm. Children in Vietnam, they study about this one when they are in primary school. Yeah. So I'm going to present it in English, but I feel the students may think, oh, we already know this teacher, but I'm going to present it in English for them. Okay. So um, who can do another reading? How about Zhang from Dong Nai? Can you read this here? Uh, how about this question? Where are we? Are we here? Okay. John, would you like to read? Yes. Okay. How about this question? Is recycling paper a good thing? This question is asking what is your opinion is. Students first share their opinions and then they gave an example which turned their opinion into a fact. Here are two examples. Is recycling paper a good thing? Student one answers, yes, cycling paper saves trees. Student two answers, yes, because landfill are filling up with paper. Mm -hmm. Landfill, who will kill me? Mm. Student one can show how many trees are saved a year through cycling using a Google search for our information or data. Student two can get information on how to land fill near the city are almost full. Yeah, John, thanks for reading the Vietnamese because last night one student said, do you really want me to read this in Vietnamese? This is an English class. But that landfills is a really difficult landfill. It's an area out this, outside the city that they fill it up with. John, does that look like a good translation into Vietnamese for landfills? Yes. Yeah. The, it's really important to study landfills because they get filled up easily, especially big cities like Ho Chi Minh City and um, Hanoi. The landfills get filled up really quickly because those cities are getting so big that um, the governments are trying to figure out how to 
not fill up the landfill so much. And so a lot of countries were actually sending their garbage to China and China accepted the garbage to put it in the desert places. But now China said, we're going to stop doing that. No matter how much money you pay us, we don't want to do that anymore because the landfills are also filling up in China. Hey, Tim, what's your brother Billy doing? <laughs> uh, he said, no, no. Uh, I think he, want to, uh, he wants uh, China to... Uh, Accept Dude. more garbage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you don't want to say that, Tim. The Chinese might get upset if you say that. Hey, Tim, can you read this one here called You Guys? Read all of this. You guys read this sentence and say if they are facts or opinion. You can raise your hands. Uh, recycling paper is a good thing to do. Uh, opinion. Nice. <laughs> okay. Next. Is Tim still there? Yes. Uh, okay, uh, Tim, how about number two? paper is less expensive to produce than new paper. Fact. Nice. I prefer, okay. I prefer recycled paper to new paper. Uh, uh, opinion. Yeah, you're good at this, Tim. Yeah, the only fact is recycling paper is less expensive because you can actually check the data. That's what John 12 read, that word data, D-A-T-A. -A. You can go on Google and you can say price of um, 10,000 tons of fresh new paper versus 10,000 tons of recycled paper. What is the current price? And then we'll show you how much people pay for that paper. And then you can say, oh, it's cheaper. I have the data right here from doing a Google search, you guys, right? Okay. Hey, Daisy, are you there? Daisy. Hello, Daisy. Yes. Daisy, do you like to read English? Yes. Okay, I'll give you this to read. Would you like to read that? Uh, yes. Okay. What? This blue part, can you see sometimes? Yeah. Okay, so you have to read it in a loud voice so everybody can hear. Okay. Sometimes telling facts from opinions is difficult to doing in your writing. So it's best to be careful. Make sure you are writing facts if it's uneasy for science or social studies. Mm. If you are writing your opinion, then that's okay most of the time for literature. Literature, yeah. Literature class. Yeah. If you give your opinion, you can support your opinion with some facts. For example, think of a story and you might say this story is about children not listen to their parents and they may, might experience something dangerous. Then you can give a fact or real events mm. where some child somewhere was bitten by a dog or something. Nice, Daisy, nice reading. So for example, if I say monkeys are dangerous and then um, Ariel and Kitty and Lewis say, well, Brendan, that's just your opinion. And I say, yeah, but there was a group of monkeys on an island in Japan and they bit my um, student, his name was June, and June was bitten by a monkey and he had to go to the hospital. So, so many people were bitten by monkeys the Japanese government moved all the monkeys to the mountains um, about 300 kilometers east of here. So that's a Teach fact. Teacher, why your student not beat, uh, bit again the monkey? <laughs> oh, my goodness. In so revenge. My, so my student grabbed the monkey in revenge. Now, this is an interesting response, right? This guy was so shocked, and he was shocked because he said, why did the monkey bite me? There are 350 students here and he chose me to bite. And he was really upset about that. And so I think he was too upset to bite back against the monkey. Now, the same group of monkeys tried to steal crackers out of my backpack. And I picked up a stone and I pretended I was a caveman and the monkeys ran away. 
So I kind of fought back, but that wasn't on the same day. That was a different day. Maybe later I'll show you guys those monkeys, by the way, because I think you guys would be interested in it. Okay, um, John um, 11, you said, where is that student? Do you remember the student Timi? He's like super intelligent. Do you remember Timi? Oh, Timi, he, um, he's like the student who was in our class. There were two like genius students, I forget who their names were. So from last night, Timi gave me this fact. I said, could someone give me a fact and um, an opinion? And this is kind of funny what he wrote. What? Tim, you read Her it. Opinion is, is, is definitely incorrect. Uh, oh, yes, all right. Well, all right, then, Mr. Is Tim. Fear. It's Tim. fear, not flat. Tim, please read it. You have to read it first. It's not, it's Tim me. Uh, it's not you, Tim. It's somebody else. All right, Tim me. The Earth's surface is 71 water, mostly hmm. from salty oceans. Yeah. Opinion. The Earth is flat like pizza, but not the most delicious pizza. I have something. <laughs> my, uh, my opinion is the Earth is pure like a uh, uh, marble, but yes. it's not the, uh, uh, it's not the circleist of marble. All right. And so it's like shaped like a sphere, you said, sphere or a marble. All right. So Timmy made it clear. And so when Timmy said the earth is flat, I said, oh, no, Timmy, you're not correct. All right. So part two, think of a subject which you have an opinion. It might be recycling, school uniforms, your favorite music, food, computer games, school subjects or classes, write two opinions about the subject and I will ask a student and ask an opinion. So I want to do breakout rooms so you can work with me or Ms. Helen and I have to stay in the main room. So Ms. Helen, I think you just need one breakout room and I want to check the number of students is about 14 or 15 tonight. Well, I, I see that there are 20, the total of uh, people here is oh you're right it changed yeah so it would be 18 if you would like to take nine students i could take nine students and yes, it's okay uh, for me okay so let, let me make sure i don't end up in the uh <laughs> i ended up in one of the chat rooms today and this little girl said where are you teacher she was really upset um so if the students can choose two opinions um or choose one opinion and then another student can respond with an opinion. So for example, you could say chocolate is a really good energy food to eat before you take a test. And then the other student can say, I disagree. I think chocolate is bad because it gives you too much energy and you get hyper. So you can disagree. It's a little bit like debate class. But um, do you see this here, Ms. Helen? If you want, um, if you want to, I'm sorry, I don't have the share screen on. Um, this is opinion one, some student gives an opinion. If you want to, you could also do a fact. Someone can say, no, that's not true. Research shows that um, chocolate makes students too hyper. So you can check somebody's opinion with a fact. So it's a little bit like debate class that we did today, Sunday. It's okay to challenge, you know, if someone wants to challenge uh, an opinion, right? Okay, so we can do this. There are so many students, Ms. Helen, that if we have nine students, do you think uh, 10 or 15 minutes is a good time? Um, well, I think maybe like um, 15 minutes if they really minutes. want to express 10 or 15. All right, and this gives a chance too for there might be students who are quiet because they're new and they're a little shy. And you know, uh, I've worked with John 12 and Red Army so long now that we, we speak really fast. So this is a good chance to have students express an opinion. It's like a nice warming up today. Okay, so I'll assign the rooms. Let me see what the rooms look like. Um, we have Ellis and Ariel and Tina and Dung and FSC and Havy and Liam and Jennifer and John and John 12 and Kitty and Lewis and Ms. Helen and Naked um, are all in the rooms, but I'm gonna start grabbing students out and putting them in um, the uh, main room. I'll do that as soon as I open the rooms, okay? I'll take nine students out to the main room. Okay, so, okay. So we'll, we'll have start. 15 minutes, right? Is it right for 15 minutes? Yeah. 
10 minutes okay. until um, Vietnam time, 8, 10, they can work on it. And it's a light exercise, not so serious. Just okay. building, building confidence, getting to know the students. All right, I'm going to- Some of them are new, so they may uh, feel shy to talk. So I really want to encourage them to talk more and share more. Okay, I'm going to move Mr. John 12 out. He's a very confident guy. Red Army, I'm going to move you to the main room. Mr. Tim, I'm going to move you to the main session because you love to talk. And I'm afraid that the other students might think, oh, my God, Lewis, uh, you did a great job on your soccer thing. Uh, Nathan, can you help the new students out? Well, you can join me. So we have Ariel Ellis, Lewis, Nathan, uh, who else? John. And yeah, this is a nice group, you guys. We have Ariel also and Ellis. What happened to Ellis? Ellis, where are you? Red Army. Ellis, what happened to your video? Are you okay? And on. Good to see you, on. All right. Lewis, can you do me a favor? If I share the screen, can you read what you wrote? Because I really wanted you to read the soccer thing. I thought it was really cool. Okay, okay. Okay, I, thanks. I, I do it. All right, thanks, Lewis. I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to put Lewis for sharing this. Uh, hey, where's my share screen? Can I share like this? Sometimes Zoom does crazy stuff, you guys. All right, you guys, um, Lewis is going to read you this to warm up and he did a nice job on soccer. Okay, there you go, Lewis. Uh, how to improve your football skill? The first one is practice every day and learn normal skill of crippling, first skill and random skill. Uh, learn and take experience from the various maps you play or from your friends. Every loss will make you better, so don't give up. Find a team that's fit with your football style. Watch professional match to learn their football skill. Keep uh, confident, but relax mood when you play in an important match. Don't lose your control, don't fight, swearing, uh, keep keep a clear mind, don't try to score a because, don't try to, to score a because an exist or that is more important, and these instructions are really so bad, I think they will make you better in your football career. I think so too, Lewis, they're good suggestions. Lewis, yeah. I use that one. Find a team that uh, suits your uh, football style or fits your style. Yeah, because some clubs are like more aggressive. Some clubs use these really advanced skills. Some clubs yeah. really have a bunch of superstars on their team. And my British friends used to show me this on television because I didn't, I played the sport in high school, but I didn't know the really small details. And my British friends could see the small details. So what you wrote here is really good. Hey, Nate, can you have your hand up? Hello, Nathan. Um. Yeah, I want to say about don't try to score a goal because I'm not really sure becoming an asset or assist or a pass is more important. Okay. When in basketball, my coach teach me that um, the thing you need to keep in mind that when you have a ball, you have to ask yourself, can you score? Mm. But if the answer is yes, don't score yet, you have to ask yourself another question. Like, does your teammate score faster than you? And if the answer is yes, so that's when we pass it to the teammate. Nice. They can. Excellent. It's kind of like an opinion plus a fact. Do you hear that, Lewis? Like, <laughs> kind of push the two together. And so, Naked, that's I'm kind of impressed by that. That's pretty, pretty darn good. Nice work on that. All right. Ariel, are you there? Yes. yes. Hey, now, Ariel, you have this beautiful um, cartoon behind you. Is that Japanese? Uh, it's Chinese. Oh, Chinese, yeah. Now, is it a fact or opinion, Ariel, if I say she has the most beautiful eyes? It's an opinion. Yeah, nice opinion. And um, what is her name? Her name is Shimawari. Oh, Shimawari, right? Okay. Now, if I say that's a Japanese name, is it a fact or opinion? It's maybe a 
Well, actually, it's a fact. Her name is Himawadi or Shimawadi? Himawadi? Well, Ariel, I speak Japanese. Do you know what Himawadi is? No. Okay, I'm going to show you what Himawadi is, you guys. So are you ready? Himawadi. And here's your Japanese lesson for tonight. I hope you guys like this. Are you ready for the big shock? And you maybe know what this is, Ariel, if you know the story of Himawadi. It's a sunflower. So Himawadi is sunflower. So I would say it's a fact that in Japanese, Himawadi means sunflower. So Ariel, if you look at her colors of her jacket and her face, she's like a sunflower, especially this one, right? The beautiful sunflower. Hey, John 11, did you know Ukraine that's having the terrible war? They're the world's yeah. number one. They're the number one sunflower producer in Ukraine, and they make a lot of sunflower oil. Oh, and yeah. I want to ask you that, um, can you type that Himawadi thing by English? Yeah, um, I'll type it out here. It's called Himawadi. Himawadi. And I think this is maybe, yeah, there's Himawadi. Uzumaki. Himawari Umuzaki. So there she is. That's what Ariel has there. And so that's a famous uh, Japanese anime. Um, that's very cute, Ariel. Now, if you say uh, Himawari is a Japanese character, that's a fact. It's not an opinion. It, it, it's definitely a fact, right? Hey, John, what's your favorite Japanese um, character? Um, I think it's Doraemon. Doraemon? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, John, I'm going to do something like this, and I'm going to go to Google again, and I'm going to um, ask ChatGPT, and I'm going to say, um, when was the first year uh, that do, hey, hey, come on. When was the first year that Doraemon was published? Okay, and then John, we're gonna look at the answer and then I want you to tell me if this is a fact or is this an opinion? Okay, here we go. John, can you read this here? Doraemon. Doraemon, a popular Japanese manga and anime series was first published in 1969. The yeah. manga was created by Fujiko Fujio, yeah. for the duo Hiroshi Fujimoto and Motu Abiko, yeah. and has since become a beloved cultural icon in Japan and world. Okay, so John, if I say um, the Japanese uh, manga and anime Draymond was first published in 1969, fact or opinion? Fact. Nice. And the manga was created by Fujiko and his friend Moto Abiko. Uh, it's awful. Yeah, that's, you know, that's a fact. <laughs> right. Last one. Um, John, everybody in Asia loves Draymond. Opinion. Opinion, yeah, because not everybody loves Draymon, but he is really popular. Nice. It says worldwide, but not everybody loves Draymon. You know, there could be some angry person in Russia who doesn't love Draymon. <laughs> okay. Nice yeah, work. My friend, my one of my friends in class especially hates Draymon. So whenever you see a Draymon book in the library, he tears it apart. He tears it apart. Let me ask Red Army. Red Army, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Um, Red Army, if I said Hanoi, um, what sports team is famous in Hanoi for? Soccer, football, or basketball? Oh, come on. I'm not very <laughs> keen on um, Hanoi sport, uh, Vietnam or Vietnam sport. But wait, what do you have behind you? You have all those sports medals and a jersey? Is that yours? Yeah. Okay, so what sport is that for? It's football. Football, yeah, soccer. And did you yeah. become did you become a good player? 
Yeah, of course. I am midfielder. A midfielder. Okay, so who is the other midfielder on your team? Mm. Can you say it again? So you're a, a good midfielder. Do you have another midfielder on your team? Mm, yes, of course. Uh, maybe i be a winger. Okay, so what's his name, the other midfielder? Oh, um, his name. Yeah, you got like an English name. No, why? Why should? Because well, I have give you a re reason. To reason for you. answering that question, because then Red Army, I'll say Red Army is a much better player than the other guy. Fact or opinion, Red Army? No. No. All right. I think and sometimes I play bad. Okay. So oh. the doesn't have a good player and the bad uh, player. Uh, okay. Fascinating. Hey, Lewis, did you know Red Army as a football player? No, I, I don't know. Pretty cool. He has all these ribbons and medals behind him. So, mm -hmm. Red Army, I'm thinking you're actually a pretty good midfielder. It could be you're just being a little bit uh difficult on yourself so be careful red army you have to think of yourself as an as a success because that's what lewis is uh 10 steps to being a great player was right have confidence in yourself learn from your mistakes so lewis maybe we'll show red army your writing again one more time all right hey trom on are you there i want to meet this on person oh no trom on just disappeared when i called on her that's kind of shocking. <laughs> All right. Um, so I got an opinion. Nathan, can you give me a fact or opinion, an example of each? And then we'll stop the breakout room in just a minute. Um, let me think. Yeah. Um, the, ocean, the ocean is blue. Nice. Fact or opinion, John from Hanoi. The ocean is blue. Opinion. Opinion? <laughs> Nathan, what do you think? Yeah, it is. The yellow sea is yellow. Yeah. Hey, John and Nathan, this is interesting, you know. Do you know the traffic light that means go and the other one means stop? What color is the traffic light for go, Nathan and John? It's green. Yeah. Do you know what the Japanese say? What? It's blue. So the color is an opinion, just like the ocean. They don't see green. They see blue when they look at the traffic light. And that's really shocking for foreigners who live in Japan. So it's kind of crazy, these facts and opinions, right? You can really challenge each other with these. So the go light in Japan is blue? Blue, yeah. They say aoi signal means blue signal. It's kind of shocking, oh. isn't it? It's like, oh my and God. Do Japan have those um, things that glow in the glow in the dark on the road when they um, go? What is that one? Um, I think that there in Japan there is something that um, is on the road and it glows in the dark, like. Um, All right, so here I'll show you guys. So I, I typed this in, right? And uh, so, yeah, we say green, green. They say aoi means blue signal, right? So they see the color blue, right? Kind of interesting, huh? By the way, look at this, you guys. This is kind of scary. This is what AI is going to do in the future. It's going to control all the cars on the highway. So, John, you know what that means? Our buddy Tim can't race his laser car anymore because this is AI controlled. He can't go more than 50 kilometers per hour. <laughs> right. Kind of cool, huh? Okay. All right, you guys, let me close the breakout rooms to see how everybody did with Miss Helen. She had a bigger uh, class, you guys. She's my new helper on Sunday night. She's really good because she was a secondary school teacher for many years, you guys. So you have to be really good behavior <laughs> or she'll punish you, okay? No, she's really kind to you guys. Okay, let's close the rooms. I hope I didn't close them easy, too early. And then we'll get to see this Tim and ask him about these uh, cars.
I was hoping Guy can join in. What is it, John? I really hope that Guy can was still in the class. Am I the who's still in the class? Guy can. Guy can, yeah. That, oh, yeah, that's the it. Guy guy that, that. The guy that said the word phenomena ultra microscopic yes. He he didn't join this class, but I think he's in. I think he's in Friday, uh, Saturday night's class, John. I think he switched classes because it's the same voice and that guy is super intelligent, right? So he's the one who put that thing that the world is flat or the world is round and pizza. I think that's Daiken, but he uses a different name. He's, he's just such a crazy genius that he uses different names. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to ask him, are you Daiken? Yeah, I'm almost, almost afraid to ask him that name, you know, that question because it might be some really strange answer, right? All right, Ms. Helen, how was your discussion with the students? Uh, all are great because they can give me both the opinions and also the fact that they can look from the internet. Ah, uh, yeah. So I think this becomes much easier if you have internet to check your facts, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, because um, we had John 11 uh, was said Draymond is his favorite character. So for a fact, we said Draymond first became a comic in 1969. But then the opinion was everybody loves Draymond. And John 11 said, no, that's not true. He has a friend who hates Draymond. <laughs> so I thought that was interesting. <laughs> All right. Um, Helen, teacher Helen, did you learn anything interesting about the students by asking them about a free talk kind of style? Uh, in, in the black card room in our group, we have Alice and Zoom. They can join a debate because when uh, Alice, they, yeah, because when Alice said that uh, she think that kids shouldn't watch YouTube short and then Zoom can give the, you know, um, the proposal for that yeah. one. And if, yeah. if you like, you can call two of them to share about their opinions. Ah, I'm glad Ellis communicated with you because she's shy in the big group and she writes really good essays. So we have to get Helen uh, Ellis to be less shy. I don't know why. Ellis, are you there? Why are you so shy in the main room? <laughs> you express really advanced opinions, Ellis. Secret. <laughs> All right, Ellis. <laughs> All right. Um, listen, I wanted to play a game, but I just don't have enough time. And so, um, Teacher Helen, one of the things these boys enjoy doing, um, there was a boy named Tommy, and Tommy loved to create stories using chat GPT. But um, his stories are like one page, and we really don't have so much time. So in the chat rooms, um, can somebody suggest a topic? for oh good um wait one second i found a really good thing from john 11. hey john 11 are you there john 11. uh i'm here teacher john can you read what you wrote in the chat room i didn't know you wrote this it's right here it's really good about recycled paper can you read this is all fact okay <laughs> Yep. Recycle paper. The costs are lower and the environmental benefits are higher. For example, recycling one ton of paper saves 7,000 gallons of water, 17 trees, and 463 gallons of oil. Manufacturing products from recycled materials, especially when cardboard or paper are involved, it is much more costly. Yeah, so, um, John, is it is it fact or opinion what you just wrote there? Uh, it's a fact, of course. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Now, John, you used American gallons. One gallon, you guys. How much? How many liters is one gallon? Do you know that one? Uh, I think I have the I have the answer in my um. <laughs> Okay, four liters equal one U.S. gallon. Oh. So when you use those gallons, um, you have to go back to your fact, and you, you wrote, 
where is it? Uh, fact, 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 John. Um, so you said 10,000 tons, um, gallons of oil. You were talking gallons of oil, 70 million gallons of water. Oh my gosh, John, that equals 280 gallons of water. And so what that looks like in big numbers, 280 million liters. Liters, yes. Yeah. So I'm going to put that for everyone. So is it that right, John? I did the calculation. 280 million liters of water are saved by recycling. So that's amazing because they have to use fresh water. You can't use ocean water to make paper. So that's using 280 million liters of fresh water. So you prove that that's a fact, not an opinion. Um, there's someone else wrote something here. We have Tina, you did an opinion. Tina, can you read your opinion? It's for everybody in the chat. So let me find Tina. Tina, where are you? Tina? Uh, I'm here. Okay, Tina, can you read your opinion? Opinion. We should ban homework for primary school. Primary school students, especially younger years, should not be burdened with doing homework. It adds too much, much stress and unnecessary extra work to already busy and tiring students. Homework also takes away from playtime and extracurricular activities, which help with the growth and development in younger school children. Homework at such a young age can also have a negative effect on the mental health of students. Very nice, Tina. Hey, Tina, you know that word extracurricular? Curricular means circular in old Roman Latin from 2000 years ago. So curricular means um, education, but it's kind of connected to circular. So yeah, similar words. And John 11 said, I agree. But Tina, in this class, we usually do just one paragraph of homework a week in writing a paragraph. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Is that OK? I think it's fine. OK, <laughs> thanks, Tina. Um, let me put this here. Uh, right, you guys, um, I'm going to put this here. Uh, this is the spaghetti one. I'm sorry. That was last week's homework. Let me quickly find your real John's quite proud of his homework. You did a wonderful job, you guys. Okay, so the homework. The homework. Um, by the way, did I show you this? This is the kind of picture that's going to make Tim crazy. Hey, Tim, are you still there? Is Tim still here? Hey, Tim, look at this roller coaster. Opinion wow. or fact? Wow. Is this the craziest roller coaster uh, in the world? Uh, I think it's, it's uh, if we fly, we'll fall down in another yes. place and we will, and we will. So my question to you, Tim, would you ride on this roller coaster? Uh, for our safety, I think I will, uh, I will wear a, a something can, uh, uh, or something like this. Right. You can wear a spacesuit. A spacesuit, right? Okay, now the question I asked last night, we have about five minutes left. This one student said that it's very popular in Vietnam for a special occasion. You and your family can go to a restaurant and get shark fin soup, but the shark fin soup oh, is expensive. My God. Yeah. And so this is very controversial. We'll look at the shark fin soup here. They say it's delicious, but there's a whole history behind this. So first question I want to ask you guys, who has tried shark fin soup? You can raise your hand if you can do the raise your hand thing. Who me. has tried shark? Who's me? <laughs> John 11. John 11, where did you have this? In Hanoi? Yeah. Is it true that it cost $100 for one person? Um, if, uh, if, if the, not really delicious one, it's, it's about 50 to 70 dollars, but okay. it's, it's, it's the, the big one and it is pretty delicious and it is in, in famous, um, restaurants. It will, yeah. be, it will cost like a hundred to a hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. So it's really expensive if it's a high quality shark fin soup. 
Let me ask John 12, have you tried shark fin soup, John? No, but I have heard about it. Do you want to try it? No, because I think shark is uh, dangerous because there are very less in the world and it's really dangerous to eat them. That's an excellent point, you guys. So if you look in my original opinion, it actually has uh, shark fin. So I will write into Google, you guys. Let me show you the process so you can see what I'm doing here. So I want a fact or opinion. So I go to Google and I write shark fin soup leaving a deadly wake. This is the article I used last night. Do you see it's purple? So you guys will know it. So here's the problem. Do you see these are the shark fins? They cut off the tail and they cut off the main thing. It says the ugly truth about shark fin soup, the delicacy means delicious thing that could drive some species to extinction. And so look at the numbers here. Uh, let me get someone to read. Uh, John John 12 from Dong Nai, are you still there? Hey, John, can you, yes. read this? can you read this blue part here? Yes, shark finding cues about 73 million of these animals each year church. So we can make shark fin soup, a traditional dish that remained popular despite sometimes being toxic. Yeah, and so that $100 thing, John 11, that's where I get a single bowl can go for $100 for high quality. And so here's the problem. There's the beautiful bowl in a Chinese restaurant with shark fin soup. But then here's the problem. Do you see all these shark fins? They kill the sharks when they're really young. So they, they kill about 73 million sharks a year. And the problem is they cut off this, they cut off this. This is a hammerhead shark, which these are kind of a, aggressive or mean sharks near a, a beach. You have to be careful of these. But they cut this off and they cut this off. Then they throw all of this gets thrown away. They don't even like use it to make dog food or cat food. They just throw it in the garbage. So all these sharks are killed and they take their fins. So they're killing too many of these sharks. And the problem is what the sharks do is sharks don't just attack live fish and people or other animals. Sharks, what they do is they eat dead animals all over the ocean. So sharks keep the oceans clean. They call them the great vacuum cleaners. So this woman is saying, don't do the shark thing, Hong Kong Shark Foundation. And uh, so this woman in Hong Kong doesn't want people to kill shark fins, uh, to collect shark fins. Oh, and by the way, uh, Tim, there's the world's biggest snake there ever was in the world. So they're gonna make snake skin soup. What do you think, Tim? Would you like to try that? No, no, no. I, just, I <laughs> thought it was hot. It was got poisonous. Do you think that would be the most delicious soup in the world? I'm just joking, Tim. I don't know what that is. That's a crazy advertisement. Okay, listen, you guys have three minutes. So I want you to try a homework. Can you do that? And you say, teacher, well, what's the homework? All right. So let's look at the bottom of this. Um, I want you to, uh, let me see if I have it phrased better here. Do, 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 do. Well, okay. Here we go. I have some topics for you, you guys. And I'm going to do this one here. And okay. So please take for your homework. You already did your chat group um, where you were thinking about facts and opinions. Can you write a fact or opinion about these topics here? And let's see. Think of a subject about which you have an opinion. It might be recycling, school uniforms, your favorite music, food, computer games, school subjects or classes. Write two opinions about the subject. And this part here, next week, I'll ask you guys to read your opinions. So write one paragraph about five sentences or seven sentences. Give us two opinions about things like eating too many sweets, wearing a summer uniform for school, playing sports after school. Any kind of opinion is okay. It can be a crazy opinion, um, but can you also do this? Can you give, can you also give one or two facts 
to support your opinion. Okay, so for example, if you say um, you shouldn't play computer games because it will damage your eyes, can you go to Google and type in, you would type in, um, do computer games damage students' eyes? Type that in and all you have to say is, yes, computer games damage students' eyes. You say, well, how do you do that, teacher? I will look in the Google chat and we'll move away from this story here. And I will write, do computer games damage young students' eyes? Question. Okay, so I'm going to share the screen so you can look at this. And here's my desktop with that story. Does video playing video games hurt your eyes? It's called Very Well Health. And so we go to Very Well Health. Hopefully there are no crazy advertisements on this. Possible concerns. Do you see the purple one here? Um, John, can you read this purple one here? Can you read this summary here? It's the purple part. If you can read just that. Gaming for a long time for me. I say I is a patient and even computer vision in joke. Yeah, so, I so if, I play some videos. So you take your link, right? And you copy your link, right? And then you can put that in as a fact. So if you say my opinion is computer games are bad, then you would put your link in there, right? And that's your fact to help you. So on your paper, you would write, I think playing computer games is not good. This is my opinion, but here is a fact to help you. And if you check the chat, you guys, I'll just paste in that link and there's how to do a link, right? You guys already know how to do a link, right? So it's not so difficult. Teacher, yes. Uh, my, uh, my, I, my uh, chat box has the same, two same link. <laughs> you had the same link, all right. So Tim, I gave you a link there for, very well health on how to take care of your eyes. So no, you are, it's, a, it's the hardest subject in the world. <laughs> Very funny, Tim. All right, you guys, let's finish. And um, for our class, you guys know for Kitty and for um, Liam, in the yellow group for this group, um, I will put exactly what the homework is. So if your mother or father says, well, what is the homework? All you have to do is go to Yalo and you can see the homework again, right, Tim? You can always check your homework in Yalo, okay? And when you finish it, just upload the paragraph to Yalo and I will check it for you and I will give you comments, okay? Not, not a why, that. teacher. It's What's that? It's Yalo. It does V, not a why. Oh, it's Yalo. Yeah, because you were correcting my Vietnamese, Mr. Tim. Teacher, it's Yalo. It's not Zalo. All right. <laughs> you guys are funny. All right. I hope you enjoyed our class, everybody. Just remember to check Yalo. And I want to say special thank you to Helen, teacher, for helping me with this class. I think this is a wonderful group of students, uh, Ms. Helen. Yes. yes. I also think so. All of them are great. Yeah, they really are great. And, and for the new students, if I speak too fast, I'm sorry. It's just that John 11 and John 12 and Tim, these guys are always telling crazy jokes to me and we start speaking really fast. So I'll try to go a little bit slower if you think I speak too fast, all right? Because we... Hey, John, what? I want to share something to you. Okay, please share. Um, you see that how I shared in the chat to everybody, that was the longest word in the world. It I know. The word that is um, composed of one, uh, 189,819 world uh, letter. All right. All right. We'll talk about it next time, Mr. John. Uh, yeah. All right. Can I say goodbye to you guys? We're a little late. So goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Have a great day. Goodbye. Study hard. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.
Bye bye, you guys. Goodbye. It was wonderful meeting you guys. Bye bye. See Goodbye, you. teacher. Bye bye, John and Hobby. Goodbye, Kitty. Bye bye, Miss Heather.